in Tribeca every month because there's so many spots. And I saw an incredible show of G's Ben Quilts by uh, one artist, oh, yes. Mary Lee, Mary Lee uh, Bendolph. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful show. I Thank saw you. a really interesting show um, at James Cohan of um, Allison Elizabeth Taylor, who does these incredibly narrative uh, detailed paintings with, um, with wood veneers. Um, uh, an incredible technique uh, and, and a really in, unusual process. There are a lot of really interesting galleries. Um, you know, if you go to Seesaw or any one of our um, online apps and just look at downtown, on Walker Street, on White Street, on Lispenard Street, um, you know, all of those places that had those big downstairs spaces that have emptied in the last year are now full of a lot of interesting galleries. I highly recommend a day in Tribeca. Mm. Yeah, I'll second that because I live there and it's amazing. Oh, wonderful. So Carolyn, have you been to any? Uh... I've been to, I mean, that's how what I've been doing with the pandemic is going to fabulous galleries and with just wear a mask, nobody's around and it's spectacular. Um, really high level. Uh, a lot of people from Chelsea have moved over, people from the Lower East Side have moved over. People, <clears throat> major, I mean, Zverner's moving onto my block. It's just. May I ask a question? Where mm -hmm. in Tribeca did you say Lipsonard Street? Oh, uh, well, I'm on Walker then? Street, and Walker Street's like a main hub, but all the whole, it's that whole area. Lipsonard, Right. Broadway, Sixth yeah. Avenue. That's right. If you go down Broadway, you know it's Walker and Lisbon on Walker, White, and maybe Franklin. But yeah, uh, Franklin too. Sort of, and then Broadway, PQW is on Broadway. Yeah. Are they are they visible? Are they out? Oh yeah. Are they oh, ground oh, level? Yeah. Do yeah. I look them up? No, they're oh, ground level. Sure, you can get a good map. map. You Thank can get you, a map. They have it. You can get a Tribeca map and it has them all on there. I highly oh, it recommend does? where? I highly In recommend galleries, probably. an app on your phone. Mm. If you look at Seesaw and you go what? down, if you look at the app Seesaw, okay. you can just click downtown right. and then you can see all of the ones that are available. And, you and can then as you walk around, you can keep track because Good, um, yeah, good, so good. There's Thank like you. four or five or sometimes six or more on each block. And well, it's I'm moving over it. towards Chinatown also. Oh, I love it. It's, uh, oh, it's yeah, can, I, can I just give uh, one more suggestion of this uh, mix? I do two art tours and I suggest mixing, just like Barbara Elman said, um, the Seesaw app and then it makes a map for you of where you're going. But because it doesn't list all the galleries, look at the art forum guide and then crisscross one with the other, but one will give you the walking and the other will, will fill you in. You don't wanna miss a great gallery that you're a show you're interested in because it wasn't listed in the seesaw, you know, so. Is that an app, art forum so, guide? No, you just go to art forum, um, dot com, dot com and they have guide and they will art uh, form art form there is art also form. an app it's also an app it's also okay i'll sit on my way i'll get there because i'm in the village and i'm so happy to get away from chelsea chelsea those are pain yes. And I, I, I just want to say that the in the art forum app they have must sees and i like their recommendations i, I see a lot of galleries and okay, I, I write that down pretty nice Good work, guys. thank you everybody yeah, thank much you. cecilia <laughs> cecilia um have you seen any shows that you would recommend um yes i i am going to give a tour like for a for a group as a non profit thing and i am doing my tour only from 27th to 25th uh today i, I posted um a video and a gallery i recommend which is the uh, kasman gallery with uh, elliot hundley his work is to die for so elaborate the video 
you you see him talking about it but in person it's unmissable um there are other shows nice too on the corner oh you mean it did yeah. that look okay yeah we just have to uh, then, then I would say uh, the get the oh, show okay. at pace yeah, is. That's um, right. um, could could people oh, please okay. mute okay. mute yourself if you're? Thank you. Um, I I would say the um, the show at pace is is a group show and it it centers around body. It, it includes a lot of different cultures, but it's really beautiful. Um, there was there were a few shows in between there. I, I've been wowed by the galleries. I, I recommend people don't overlook this opportunity. Do you can have I a mention, can I mention a show at Pace? The Thomas Noskowski show at Pace, I think yes. on the third yes. floor. Exactly. Is gorgeous. Cecilia, do you have a, a website or a place where we could see you said you, you write them up on your on your site, what you're going to show? Um, I have, with doing the scale show, I kind of have been delinquent putting <laughs> things up on my Tumblr blog. So I, I apologize. And when I do again, I will post it in the listserv. Thank you. So I think we're also curious to hear what just what people are thinking about galleries in general are you going to be looking for a gallery or another gallery or more galleries or to change a gallery or do you want out of the gallery system totally do you have another idea of how you're gonna market your work or get it out there anybody want to jump in on this i know that some of you are thinking about this wow I've never heard such a get yeah, Monroe, please unmute them. I have mostly shown my work in galleries over 20, 25 year period. And my experience is New York is much harder than any place else. So you could try someplace outside of New York, but if you're looking for a gallery here that you go in person and get to know the gallery and be sure that the gallery shows work like yours and people at the level you're at. So, you know, don't knock on the door of a gallery that's got people that are in the Whitney Biennial because you just won't get in. But find a gallery that kind of suits you in every way and then spend a lot of time in person with that gallery. That's, some people say you send slides and stuff. I, that's never worked for me. What's worked for me is to go there in person, really get to know the owner and then show them my work. I'd just like to mention that. And and your show, your tell us about your gallery now. It's it's in an interesting location. Yeah. Well, he obviously gets a good price for a very large, beautiful gallery. And um, it's it's I, up in it's in Harlem. It's in East Harlem. Yeah. It's in yeah. yeah. So I I find myself kind of an unknown in the New York gallery scene and. Yeah. Like, who can I approach? I tried one or two people in Chelsea where I thought my work fit pretty well, but I don't have the reputation that the people in their galleries have. So mm -hmm. I, I found David Richard and um, I, I thought I did fit there. He shows all abstract work and a lot of color orientation. And uh, so I did go visit him a couple times and, and uh, Sort of get to know him. He's hard to get to know, but <laughs> interesting. Uh, you know, you do your best. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, you do well. Well, <laughs> and, and, gallery. Sorry, David, David Richard Gallery on two eleven West, two eleven East, uh, one hundred and twenty first Street. David Richard. Yeah. Yeah. And um, when you say get to know the owner, how do you get access when well, you? Can one way, one way might be to go to an opening and uh -huh. from five to seven, get there at 10 or five. And uh -huh. then you're sitting there waiting for somebody to arrive. Oh, and that's so, interesting. Because otherwise they might be closed off in their desk somewhere. So yeah. there they are out there ready to greet people and you come in, nobody else is there. So you can talk to them. Brilliant. Brilliant. 
Monroe, I tell mean, us a little bit about your other galleries because you show in mm -hmm. other cities. Well, I show in London and um, that was just sort of a happy coincidence that I got in that gallery. Um, but I've been showing there. The other thing is to, to hang on to a gallery and they make tons of mistakes, like losing things of yours and putting you in a bad place in a show and forgetting- Can you close the door, you're losing heat. Yeah, <laughs> well, I, I think um, you got to really pick your battle. You know, what's important to you. And the most important thing really is you get paid on time. Um, sorry, just going to ask people to keep muting if they're not talking. OK, great. And then I would recommend Denver as a city. Um, I've shown in three galleries there and a couple of museums. And it's a small enough city that people are friendly and nice and there's not the huge number of artists relative to galleries. And I mean, you could look at Kansas City or Atlanta or, um, you know, Baton Rouge or where, wherever you think there might be a little hotbed of galleries. And um, like I've showed in St. Louis and I got sales and attention there. Like I wouldn't really get in New York. So some of the lesser cities are much more open, particularly to showing a gallery, an artist from New York. Mm, wonderful. That's, thank you. Um, yeah, yeah. Anybody else? Yeah, Janie, Janie Crimmins. Uh, you have to unmute. What was her name? She was wonderful, that lady. Thank you so much. That was Monroe <laughs> Hodder. Who? Uh, Monroe Hodder. Oh, thank you. And Janie. Thank you, Crimmins. Monroe. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Monroe. Janie. So um, I can't remember the woman's name. She's a famous encaustic painter. She came to speak to us when we were meeting in person. I can't remember her name. Well, but she was, she spoke about forget about New York. Joanne Matera. Yes. Oh. Yes. Joanne Matera came and spoke to our group and she said, forget about New York. She had most of her sales and most of her galleries were outside of the city and she was doing really well. Just exactly what Monroe was talking about. That she said, you know, she probably has representation in New York because she's a very well-known artist, but she had more success going to other cities mm. and finding other venues for her work. And I think like Monroe just kind of backed up exactly what Joanne Matera had told us. Mm -hmm. That's Thank you. Great. No, good it's reminder. Awesome. That was a great so, talk. Uh, I have a question. How would, you go, how would you go about establishing relationships with galleries outside the city? Do you have to go there and visit? Do you That's a very good question. Via Zoom, what, what are some ideas? Um, hmm. I, I know that um, I have had several galleries in different cities over the years in Santa Fe, in San Francisco, um, and uh, in Lenox, Massachusetts. And in all those places, I did actually go to those cities um, um, for various reasons. Sometimes just I was visiting someone and so I, checked into galleries. Um, so, but but that was a long time ago. And, and I wonder now, you know, in the days of internet and Zoom and email, it's much easier. Uh, Monroe, did you visit those cities or did you make your contacts? I was just gonna say that um, another way to do this is to get into um, a fairly visible show at a nonprofit center in the city you like. Mm. Um, and then, go to the gallery and say, you know, look, uh, just write them an email. Say, I, I'm in a show at the da, da I'm very interested in your gallery and send them uh, a picture in the email of your work. You want to make this as... I think she was going to say, you want to make this your as best easy picture as possible. On the front. Mm -hmm. Yes, they don't have to open a page. <laughs> but I do, I do think that in-person visits are the best. I just, yeah. I have an interesting story. I don't know what possessed me. Maybe I've been doing it for so long. Um, 
but I went to the Art on Paper show and there's a gallery, MM Fine Art, and every year they have a black and white show. There's not a lot of artists working in black and white. And I always wonder, well, how do I get there? And you know, how come I've never been part of it? So I went to the show, the Art on Paper show, and I saw that the, uh, one of the owners, Michael, and he said, how come I've never been invited to your black and white show? I've never done that. You know, people are so, I know, right? I, I'm whatever. People are so intimidated. And he even said to me, wow, I don't usually talk to people. He looked at the work. He loved it. He didn't respond to my email. So we'll see. But it was just interesting to not have that fear or whatever. At that moment, when I walked into his space and I said, how come I've never been invited to your black and white show? And I'm like, you know. <laughs> Donna, Whatever. did he know who you were? Did no. he know? No, oh. he said, where have you been? And, you know, we talked and it was pretty amazing, but it was just funny because sometimes it could be so intimidating. And I just said, I'm going for it. So <laughs> I um, love it. A little chutzpah. Yeah. yeah. So it's interesting too, because people do put gallery owners on a certain plateau. And he even said to me, I don't usually talk to people. And I was like, oh, you know. <laughs> I wonder whether talk to you. I wonder whether there's much prejudice against older painters. People are surprised when they see my work because I'm a little old lady. I don't oh. think that's true. That's not true. I think if you're if if we're ninety plus, then we're very hot and desirable for galleries. <laughs> um, but I, I just wanted to share a little bit of my experience. I recently had a solo show in Pittsburgh. And I had a show in uh, Santa Fe. And in the Pittsburgh, I had friends there who knew the gallery. And so before I even went to the gallery, they introduced themselves and said they were going to be sending an artist. And that seemed to make mm -hmm. my introduction a lot easier. So if you have whether it's, I mean, I agree that smaller cities are easier to break into. At least I've found New York to be pretty impossible. Um, but if you have someone that you know in the city who knows the gallery, not as an artist necessarily, but as someone who goes to the shows, that person may be able to make an introduction. And I think it's easier for galleries if there's a kind of a third person introducing you as an artist. Just That's a great tip. Yeah. And are you showing there at that gallery? The one in Pittsburgh I showed in October. Oh, um, great. And sold some work, although, you know, the other thing is that New Jersey and New York prices are very different than prices in other cities. Mm -hmm. And I don't change my prices. Um, so that's something um, that as an artist, we need to think through. Mm -hmm. So what I, what I charge in New York or New Jersey, which is completely um, acceptable, may be harder for people in a smaller mm -hmm. city, or they're just not used to paying those kind of prices. Right. Well, that is something to think about too. Um, I've had that levels. problem too. But I've told galleries, smaller galleries, to just go ahead and discount, discuss it with me, and we can give huge discounts. Okay. I, I also huge said discounts. Discount. Right. I, I agree with you there. I've offered 15% discounts, but when I asked the gallery to discount more, they wanted me to change my price, and that I couldn't do. Mm. So it's, it's a little complicated. Mm hmm Interesting. Has anybody else had experience with this? Um... Yeah, if I could jump in. Can you yes. hear me? Um, yes. To a couple things. One, I'm, I'm in Paris at the moment, and I had this problem with a gallery in Serbia because um, the price points were really different uh, yeah. in terms of what people could afford. And the way I got around that was that I had the work printed locally in Serbia, so I called it the Serbian edition just to share ah. that one little nugget for you guys. I mean, I know it's difficult for the, the painters and such, but just as a little yeah. idea. The other thing is in terms of getting in galleries in general, whether it's Kansas City, New York, Paris, um, not to be brutally obvious, but be cool. Like don't hassle them. I, I, I love the idea of getting there 10 minutes before 
but if they're clearly running around like setting up the wine, um, then don't start talking to them about your work. Um, so, but I think to Donna, like Donna's story is great because she somehow probably read the temperature of the room and just decided to just be a little bit, her message was different than, oh, please show my work, but why haven't you invited me? So that was a pattern interrupt, what's called, just to share like my little analysis of that. And that somehow resonated with the gallerist. So, you know, be cool, be, know when to be sort of, you know, introducing. But the other way, how, how do you connect with galleries um, that are maybe not in your hometown? Um, you know, follow their work, comment on stuff, write them a little note. You know, Jason, are you start the living, relationship. Are you living and working in Paris or just I'm in visiting? both. I'm in Paris and New York. No, I'm from New York. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm in both. Okay. You know, uh -huh. oh, good a, for you. I commute back and forth. Yeah, it's insane. Wow. <laughs> Very I'm just nice. curious if people have had any luck using Instagram to connect. Some, yeah. Anyway, I'm going to mute myself. Okay. Thanks. Um, I, I, yeah. I have one gallery that had been following me for a while, and I wrote the gallerist a note and just you know said I loved the work that he showed and said that I'd be interested in showing nothing has happened yet but I guess I'll continue to follow up and see if I can develop a relationship you know I think if, if a gallery likes your work repeatedly then it's worthwhile reaching out to them through Instagram okay yes um, um Fran Yes, hi, Lynn. I just wanted to mention that um, I had a friend that went to a gallery. This is a gallery upstate, but uh, it's outside of Woodstock. So they have a more sophisticated audience. And um, they uh, introduced themselves and uh, told the owner that they were an artist. And he immediately said, are you an Instagram? And they were, of course. And that's the way he looked at his, their work. And I don't know what the outcome of that was, but it was interesting because he didn't want, he wasn't interested in a website or anything. He just wanted to know if they were on Instagram. So I just wanted to add that. Mm -hmm. Well, those people who worked with Marina know that that's how people look at work now. They don't look at your website. They scroll down on Instagram and that's why she advises no personal stuff on your Instagram feed or keep it to a real minimum because people are just gonna look on their phone and scroll down and see what's there. They're not gonna go to a website. They're not gonna do any of that. So that's what she advises. Yeah, uh, can I just add one thing to that? I, a lot of times look at my Instagram and I kind of curate it so that it looks interesting. There might be posts that are not, that don't look as good or whatever then I eliminate it after a while, you know, just so that exactly if someone looks at my, at my Instagram as a portfolio, that it can work that way too. Uh, another thing that um, has been recommended, I know by, um, by Marina and others is, is that if you want to connect with a gallery, um, and you, you visit the gallery and you see a show that you like, you can post the show in your story and kind of advertising it for the gallery, really. Say, I saw this show that was great and then you can tag the gallery. Um, and, and it's a way of getting their attention, but you're not asking for something for yourself, but rather you're sharing uh, about, about so if I could interrupt, is that mm -hmm. people who will see that are the people sitting at the computers in the front of the gallery? The owner is not going to necessarily see that unless, not necessarily. You, DM that, unless you DM them that them mm -hmm. directly, which you can do mm -hmm. that way. I mean, right. Yeah, yeah, that's um, a good point. I did the same thing uh, um, as Cecilia. I curate. I go in and I look and I eliminate. And I look at other people's um, Instagram feed to see if I want to follow them and add them. And two things make me just not go to it and not even think about it. If there's animals on there or if there's anything political, okay? If I see a black life, you know, that black box that everybody was putting up, I don't add them. 
it's just a way of eliminating. Um, but if anything political is on there, I don't I don't follow them. Wait, so, what's the problem with animals? I just don't think that it, I think it should be a gallery that should be showing your work and the mm -hmm. animals are too cute. Oh, so you're talking about you're looking at galleries pages. No, no, I'm looking at an, I'm looking at somebody's Instagram site and mm -hmm. I see live animals, dogs, cats, whatever. They're oh, dog, just cats. just a cute video as opposed to like their cat video, sitting in their studio. Yeah but, yeah, but Ellen, <laughs> you're not talking about art that is about animals. No, no, okay. I'm talking about an, an a photo of an animal. Okay, you know that they Just put up to somebody because I, I think Marina was somebody said you know oh you should put that holds people's attention. You put a cat up, shows that you're personal and you're human. I but not just a cat necessarily, but like a cat sitting in front of your painting or with you while you're painting in your studio, I think was maybe. Oh yeah, but it was just, you know, a couple of a cat, a picture of a dog, a cat, a goat, something I like think that. Stories <laughs> are, I think stories are good for that because they don't go on your grid, but they do show your personality. That and is what a you're good up to. point. I think Marina, has, very good point. Uh, Marina has a dog and I think that's in her stories. So we're not yep. answering. But, but not on the grid. It's, it's, I don't know about the grid. No, we I'm know what you're about talking about, Ellen. I think you're just like people who are posting cute pics of cats yeah. and dogs. It's like you want your page to be a little more serious. I, I know. Would add, I would add food hour. to that, you know, people. Who oh, yeah, food, food posts. <laughs> their mm. lunch, their dinner, you know. I'm just going to jump in pics. here. I know. I'm just going to jump in here for one <laughs> minute because I just noticed that it's after 11. We got yeah, so into talking. So the meeting has officially ended that. and we understand if anyone has to go, but we can keep on talking for.